All right, so we're back, and uh, I have done so far two layers of the cold blue on uh, what was the silver, you know, regular virgin barrel. As you can see, the parts that are like turned metal, I'm not a machinist, so I apologize for my ignorance of terms, but the one that's like the spun look and then the flatter look on the journals is a little... You know, obviously a little different consistency. Let me try to get the good light here. Um, actually, you know what? Let's head out into the horribly messy backyard here, and I'll show you. I think this came out pretty much amazing. Yeah, my dogs have eaten the yard, so. This is two layers of the cold blue. Two applications, if you will. I am, as always, thoroughly amazed with the cold blue. I mean, it just, it's such a good job. And this is what, when the spray bottle, it just seems to go on a lot more even. I mean, you can't really get a much better home bluing job than that. Now, it's obviously not really, really dark. The more coats you do, the darker it goes. This is too, because I'm trying to maintain the look of a field rifle. A gun that was actually used not some pretty safe queen type thing this is uh this is going to look like a battlefield pickup which in an offshoot way it is i mean it's a parts kit from a battlefield gun so this uh this barrel was a really nice shiny polished uh metal before and uh, a little bit of cold bluing Helps it uh, helps it achieve really really nice look. So this um, a little more steel wool, kind of kind of fade it in certain spots. Will have it match the rest of the parts almost perfectly. I'll keep holding the original parts next to it and uh, seeing how the color lines up. But for now, I mean, it's perfectly even. There's no variations I mean beyond tiny little ones of course but a couple times I'd had really big variations with wiping it on with a cotton swab so I got a uh, tip from a guy on YouTube sorry there's an airplane going overhead I got a tip from a guy on YouTube to uh, put the stuff in a spray bottle and spray it because you know for one you can reuse it you spray it into a cup and you can reuse it but uh, he, he said that it actually would, you know, coat it better. And he was right because I have done several times with the cotton swab, cotton ball thing. I've used steel wool. Steel wool is not bad. If you, if you saturate your steel wool and rub it with that, that's not bad. It, uh, it works good. But this is faster, you know, because you, you do want to rinse it within that minute. And so if you're only wiping it with a cotton swab, you're going to get halfway, rinse it, you know, and that leaves room for... Uh, different colors, but if you spray it, you can spray the whole thing in, you know, I don't know, 15 seconds or so, um, 30 seconds tops, and then rinse it off, and you're still within the uh, the right timeline there. So that is my Virgin M70B2. Now I, it could be B1, but for some, I'm, I'm thinking it's B2. I'm usually looking at the computer, and so I know right off the hand. But thick stock. You go M70. That's my blued barrel. It was uh, pretty easy to uh, to do. I just went down to the local fun shop, grabbed a bottle of. Um, actually, I didn't use perma blue this time. I used super blue, and the difference is super blue is more for the highly polished metals. Like on the side of my Colt 1911, um, has like a mirror polished metal, and and it's blued. That's what this stuff is for, but the difference is between super blue and perma blue is the super blue is a lot darker black, they say. They say it's a lot, lot darker. And so I don't know if, if that's the case, but it looks good. I guess it is a little blacker versus blue than the perma blue, but they're both great, you know. I almost didn't use it because I've heard so much crap about Birchwood Casey, but... Um, about the bluing at least, but I am here to report that that is all just rumor. I'm trying to get you the best view I can here.
It just doesn't get much per more perfect than that, you know what I mean? That is just... That is just what a home blued barrel should look like if you're matching a battlefield rifle. Thanks for watching. As, uh, as I said before, I'm going to keep making videos and hopefully a couple people will subscribe because I am going to try everything I can to make informative videos. As of right now, I'm just usually ripping off stuff off the other YouTube channels and making videos about stuff that already exists. But uh, one thing I do differently is I pretty much do everything, um, a lot of things, you know, without have prior done them before, and I'm just learning. That's the way I like to, to learn, is I like to just uh, try it and screw it up as many times as it needs before I get it right, and that's usually how I um, am able to get things done and done right, is just the process of trial and error over and over and over again, and so a lot of people post videos, and what they do, it works every time. Um, with me, I'll end up posting stuff, and you'll see me screw up a lot. And um, that's part of the learning process because you're going to screw up too. So I figure why not see it. So this time it worked out well. Uh, the barrel came out nicely. It didn't splotch up. I'm pretty stoked on that. Once I go to cut the extraction relief cut, I'll uh, make a video about that because that is going to be um, drastic for me because... Uh, it's nerve-wracking. The, the, whoa, almost dropped you. The one that was done on the original barrel was shit. I mean, whoever did it, it looked like they just took a Dremel and just kind of nibbled away at it. Like, it was really poorly done. So, I'm not too terribly worried because if they could get away with that and the, and the weapon fired, then, uh, and fired on full auto, then I think that whatever I do will be acceptable because I, uh, I tend to be a perfectionist. So, I will, within my limits, do the best I can. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll show you next time I do something interesting that you might give a shit about. Thanks.